Hello my lovelies, today I wanted to talk to you about elegance and styling tips. I made a short video on TikTok about it and so many people seem to really like it, but obviously you cannot go in depth and be specific enough in a 20 second video. So I decided to make an extended version for those of you who would like to know how to look chic classy and elegant. These are the tips that helped me throughout my journey. It took me some years to realize it in the first place, implement it in my life and master it. This was not an overnight transformation and I continuously work on myself. So without further ado, my tip number one, designing logos and labels are not for show. A lot of people seem to be confused when I talk about elegant appearance with the desire to look rich by covering yourself in designer clothing and accessories. We see it all over the Instagram and honestly I see it all over Frankfurt where I live. People really love their designer brands here and more importantly they like to show it to everyone else around by wearing Louis Vuitton bags uh, with logos all over it. I don't know, Hugo Boss t-shirts in massive letters, uh, Jimmy Choo heels and so on. Um, there is nothing wrong with wearing designer pieces if you like them, but I don't think it is elegant to become basically a walk-in billboard or an advertisement for a specific brand. I made an entire series on my TikTok that shows you high quality designer bags that don't have in-your-face logos that are very discreet. People don't need to know what brands you are buying from. They don't need to know how much it costs. This does not show your class. It's quite the opposite. People who are truly financially well off uh, tend to be more discreet and even simply for safety reasons. Also, they don't feel the need to prove anyone anything. You will look a lot more elegant and sophisticated if you don't show brand logos too much. My tip number two is to choose sensual over sexual. Elegant ladies don't wear revealing clothing, meaning extra short dresses and skirts or shorts, very deep necklines, any see-through clothing, uh, any cutouts that seem to be very trendy these days, or showing your underwear. You can still show your feminine silhouette without showing too much skin. Whether we like it or not, women are still being sexualized and judged by their appearance. Now, does everyone is doing that? No, thankfully it's 2022, but many people still do and yes, you will get a lot of attention. But the major difference between looking sensual versus sexual is the quality of the attention that you get. I was fighting this for the longest time when I was younger because I thought it was unfair and I didn't want to hide behind my clothing. But as I got more experienced and mature, I realized that it's not about what society tells you to do, it's about you positioning yourself within a society and the message that you communicate by wearing a certain attire. And let me tell you, people started to treat me with a lot more respect, care and fascination once I made that switch in my head and changed the way I dress. It's not about about society's standards, it's about your standards. Moving on to tip number three, choose natural minimal makeup. Again, something I didn't know how to do better when I was younger. I was wearing big fake eyelashes, I was wearing full-on smoky eyes during the daytime, I was wearing foundation that was not sitting well on my skin. So this is by no means judging others. I've been there, I've done that, and I found a better way, so I wanted to share it with you. I'm gonna tell you straight away, a lot of it is about your confidence, confidence in your own skin and loving your natural beauty. Yes, you can make yourself even more beautiful with some makeup to enhance your natural features, but not by painting a whole new face. I don't use any foundation anymore, I don't do contouring or color correcting, I don't wear those massive eyelashes and I wear an appropriate makeup for the daytime and for the night out or a special occasion. Now, an artist within me still loves to play with colors and shimmers and express myself in different ways depending on my mood. For example, right now I am very much into a red lipstick face and this is totally fine. Color is not the enemy here. It's when you make your face look cakey or do those soapy brows, crazy contouring and wearing makeup that is not appropriate in certain settings. This is when it interferes with your elegance. My tip number four is kind of going along the same lines and that is invest in quality skincare. When you have beautiful, healthy and glowing skin, you don't need to cover it with makeup. Instead, you look very fresh and put together 
with some mascara and maybe some lipstick. It doesn't have to be an elaborate skincare routine either, unless you enjoy this process like I am. I try and review premium skincare products here on my channel and I love it. Do you need all these products I show you? No. Find what works for you and stick to your routine. Keep it simple. Unless I'm filming, my skincare usually takes me 10 minutes and my makeup takes me 5 minutes at most. Since we're talking about personal grooming, my tip number five is to keep your nails neat and don't do very long, colorful nails. I am talking about those fake acrylic and gel nails in bright pink color and glitters and all that. This may offend many people, even though this is not my intention, but it looks cheap and tacky and sometimes even scary. Short to medium, well-groomed, neat nails are a lot more elegant. 90% of the time, I personally wear it in a very natural beige or light pink colors, something that is very similar to the color of my actual nails. Sometimes I like to spice things up with some red or burgundy color. Just avoid those super weird colors like neon green or gray or fuchsia pink. If you don't wear any nail polish, it's fine too. As long as your cuticles are neat and your hands are well moisturized, it is considered to be very elegant. Obviously, keep it clean under your nails. I hope this goes without saying. Let's touch upon hair care and styling, which is my tip number six. This very much depends on the texture of your hair, whether you have straight or curly, coarse or fine hair. The key takeaways here are it's not about the length or the color of your hair, it's about the health of your hair. Healthy hair looks beautiful, so if you have split ends or dry ends, trim it regularly. If you notice that towards the ends your hair gets very thin, it's better to keep it shorter then. Use hair oils and protection products if you heat style your hair to maintain the shine and strength of your hair. Avoid any juvenile hair colors like greens and blues and pinks. If you get your hair colored, keep it within realistic hair colors. Those tend to look the best. I used to rock bright red mermaid hair. Was it a lot of fun when I was a teen? Absolutely. I loved it. Am I going to look sophisticated wearing it now? No. Going back to styling advice, my tip number seven is to opt for natural fabrics over synthetics. I'm talking about linen, organic cotton, wool, cashmere, silk, leather, etc. I try to support brands that sustainably source their materials and ethically treat their employees. I try to avoid fast fashion as much as possible and support small local businesses, which also often means higher quality clothing. Yes, it comes at a higher price than mass-produced stuff in the third world countries, but it will also serve me for many years. I don't follow any trends, I buy classic, timeless pieces that never go out of style. There is a massive difference between a linen dress that I bought on Etsy, for example, that was custom made according to my measurements, versus a cheap dress bought in Shane, for example. Invest in high quality materials and well made clothing. It's gonna instantly elevate your look and make you look effortlessly chic. You don't need to keep replacing it because it's not gonna fall apart after three washes. Tip number eight avoid colorful prints and patterns, especially if you're on a budget. It is a lot easier to make your outfit look put together and chic if you're wearing neutral colors like beige, ivory, white, hockey, brown, maybe some navy blue and sage green. But the more color you introduce to your wardrobe, the trickier it gets to style it and mix and match it together. If the clothing is inexpensive and not the best quality, the prints and patterns tend to wash off and fade and it starts to look worn out and old very quickly. So creating a capsule wardrobe with essential quality pieces in neutral colors will make your life a lot easier and you will look more elegant. Now that we covered appearance in details, let's talk about other things that you need in order to become an elegant lady. Let me get the obvious out of the way. Tip number nine, learn table manners and practice etiquette. It doesn't matter how you look if your behavior and manners cannot support that. Luckily, these days people are generally a lot more casual and less uptight compared to how it used to be. However, you still need to learn and master a code of conduct depending on your surrounding and the occasion. And I say master because you want these things to come out naturally. You're gonna look awkward if you are too self-conscious about doing things in an elegant way. It can look almost theatrical. So you want this to become your second nature. There are plenty of content creators here on YouTube that go in depth about all aspects of etiquette and manners. I highly recommend consuming more of that content and then 
try to do it yourself. My tip number 10 is travel more and broaden your horizons. I am well aware that not everyone can afford that. I am myself coming from a very humble background, so this is by no means an ignorant statement. But even when I was a broke student, I still managed to regularly go and explore new places and new cultures on a little to no budget. I managed to spend an amazing vacation in Italy for 10 days with zero euros in my pockets, quite literally. And till this day, it was one of my most memorable trips. Maybe one day I will tell this story. There are many programs that allow you to work and travel at the same time. If you're a student, there are many exchange programs. If you work in a corporation, see if you can maybe transfer for some time to a branch in a different location. The opportunities are endless when you look for it. Traveling will give you such an experience that you will never learn from books or online. It will get you out of your comfort zone. It will strengthen your character. You will have so many stories to tell. I can write an entire book about my adventures. People will love talking to you. By getting familiar with different cultures and languages, it can also help you to avoid some misunderstandings and navigate in a multicultural environment. You will know how to behave appropriately based on another person's background. It all adds up to your chest of knowledge and experience. Speaking of knowledge, my tip number 11 is to read more classic and development books. People don't read much these days, and those who do usually read short blog posts or magazines or YA fiction novels, and nothing wrong with that, but it's not enough. Uh, in order to be able to have deep, meaningful conversations, you need to have this depth within you. The questions and discussions that arise in your head when you read a philosophy book or ancient mythology or classical literature it will improve your vocabulary and language skills in general. You will get used to processing complex thoughts and ideas and have discussions about it. And this is rare. Everyone can get fake nails and lashes these days. There is nothing unique or elegant about it. But when you have a curious mind that is full of ideas, knowledge and thoughts, and you are able to converse about meaningful topics, this is what will make you stand out like nothing else. People will remember you, they will reach out to you, this is something you cannot buy, this is something you need to develop. And classical literature is a great place to start. It's also not about how many books you read or how many authors you know, it's about how much value you extracted from it and retained in your head. Self-care is a priority, not a luxury. Another statement that people tend to get upset over, so let me explain. You cannot give or help if your own tank is empty. We have busy mothers that only give, give, give and tend to their children's needs. They take care of their husbands, keep the whole house together. Some of them even manage to have full-time jobs and a bunch of other responsibilities. Yet they're drained, they're tired, they're stressed, anxious, on edge. They get frustrated easily, they have meltdowns in the closet. This is not sustainable. And yes, your children will be well fed and your house will be sparkling clean, but what example do you set for your children? That it is okay to completely give up on yourself? How fast will you snap on your child when they do something wrong because you are exhausted and stressed? What mood and energy will you project onto your family? What attitude will you give to your colleagues? What arguments will you get in with your mother or a salesperson at your local store? There will be no elegance and no beauty without the inner peace. And it starts with self-care. Take time for yourself, treat yourself, get a proper rest, prioritize your own needs before others. Nobody will thank you for all your hard work. They will ask more from you. So it is up to you to set those boundaries, to take care of your mental and emotional well-being, get in a place where you as a person thrive, and then you will be able to give and take care of others because your own tank is full. Surround yourself with high-value female friends and quality people in general. Life is already difficult and stressful enough. You want to have people around that will be your biggest support and your biggest cheerleaders instead of bringing you down. I have cut ties with toxic people in my life, uh, those who tried to bring me down in order to uplift themselves, those who were jealous, those who constantly had drama going on. 
I have set boundaries with my family members and people close to me in order to maintain healthy relationships, love and respect for each other. Me and my friend always celebrate each other's successes and wins. We quite literally make a happy dance together. And by practicing gratitude, we attract even more abundance in our life. You want high vibration people around you because they will have an impact on your life. Tip number 14, socialize in high quality establishments. Again, I know not everyone can afford that, but hear me out. Even if you're not there yet financially, there are two main benefits why you still want to do that. By spending time in more upscale places, whether it's a nicer restaurant, a five-star hotel, a lit gym club, or even streets with premium stores and so on, you open up for possibilities and opportunities. Starting from friendships, maybe even potential life partners, career opportunities. When you meet and engage with high value people, it can open many doors for you. And again, there is this manifestation and visualization factor. By being in these kind of environments, by being surrounded by high value people, it is a lot easier to imagine yourself being part of that and even believe in that. And it works great from a love attraction perspective. So instead of going to a shabby bar every Friday, maybe treat yourself to a nicer dinner in a restaurant once a month and watch how your life transforms. And my last tip, number 15, work on your confidence. You heard this many times, I know, but all my previous tips are gonna be really hard to pull off, some of them impossible, if you're not confident, if you don't love yourself, if you are desperate and you're chasing instead of attracting. It took me a lot of healing and a lot of work on myself, my mindset, my looks, my energy, my surrounding to get where I am today to be truly confident, not fake until you're making it, to be proud of myself and kind to myself. Now there is so much loving and peaceful energy within me that I can share it with others. And other negative energies, jealousy, unpleasant situations, stress, it doesn't affect me nearly as much as it used to because now I can stand my ground and feel comfortable doing so and being 100% unapologetically myself. This is powerful, my friends, and I wish everyone to get there. I hope this helps. Uh, there are many more things that I didn't cover in this video, but it is already getting so long and I'm getting tired of talking. So we can continue the discussion in the comment section. Share with me your best elegance tips. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I post elegance-related content there on a daily basis. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week.